Florida Ice Guys posted made a custom vision. We, we kind of partnered together about four years ago. Um, and it, Dr. Chokesy and I were originally part of Florida Ice Specialists. Our background, I was at Mayo Clinic for about 10 years, uh, and then went into private practice. Dr. Chokesy was at the University of Florida for, for a few years, and he went into private practice, and we kind of came together as Florida Ice Specialists. Um, and then we kind of approached Dr. Meda. It didn't make sense for us to kind of be competing. It didn't, you know, just from a technology perspective, we could do more if we could pull, pull resources and pull our experience. So we kind of joined forces, if you will. Um, and it's nice having kind of three LASIK surgeons in one practice. We can bounce cases off each other. We can discuss lots of things here. But that's, that's kind of the, the evolution of our practice and how we kind of started it and who we are. But I talked a little bit about what our history has been. Dr. Meda uh, has been do, doing LASIK uh, really for since the, since the mid 90s in terms of PRK and LASIK. I came to town in 2002 and Dr. Tricks, came oh, no, before. before? No, he said right, right after me. So we've been in town here for a while kind of doing this thing. And like I said, we were each doing our own thing, but, but coming together really allows us to really pull resources, pull talent, and it, it, it's, it's been a really effective model in terms of how we can deliver over care. So I kind of hit, hit some of the highlights earlier. Uh, I think as far as, you know, when you're looking for LASIK, um, you know, it, it's, to me, it's, it's, an, it's an important decision, right? It's not a haircut. Uh, so people sometimes kind of downplay it, but I think it's important to realize it's a surgical procedure. And we take it very, very seriously, right? This is, this is, this is critical here. So, if, if, you know, when you come to our practice, you're not going to find this much level of experience and expertise in town. I mean, that's just the reality of it. Um, as far as experience goes, as far as training goes, we're both fellowship trained uh, corneal and LASIK surgeons. I was at Duke for a year. Dr. Chokesy worked with Dr. Mark Speaker, who's one of the two uh, LASIK surgeons in New York City. So um, we, we've taken care of Jaguar players. You know, we do LASIK and PRK for them. Obviously, they have a lot of investment in their bodies, and so they're going to take this decision very seriously. And then more, more recently, we are now LASIK partners with the Mayo Clinic. So, um, you know, like I said, I think there's, there's a lot of value in terms of what we bring to the table as you make this decision. So as far as what we're kind of going to discuss here, um, we'll, we'll talk about um, some of the early vision correction procedures out there. You may have heard some of the names, just so you have some basics. We'll talk about how things have advanced and what are the latest procedures we're doing here. Um, we'll talk about what we do prior to surgery, what happens on the day of the procedure, so you have some level of comfort with it, and then what's some of the post-operative care, and then we'll, we'll discuss how we kind of go forward if you decide to go forward, and obviously get to any question and answers you may have. So when we're looking at, at refractive surgery, right, that's kind of the umbrella term here, LASIK is one type of refractive surgery here. So um, we can do a procedure on your cornea to, to flatten or steepen your cornea, that's where LASIK comes into play. But there are other ways with more extreme ranges of vision, depending on what your need is for correction, we can address things. So, you know, it's important to understand, we do a, a lot of full range surgery, not just LASIK surgery. So if you're just a LASIK surgeon at some of these corporate places, you kind of have one hammer, right? So everything's a nail, right? Because you just have that one tool. Whereas we realize certain, certain patients are gonna be benefit from other procedures, which is gonna free them up from glasses, and be better for them in terms of long-term outcomes and, and benefits. So when you come in for evaluation, we really look at the total package, your age, what's out there, what's going on. Uh, if you're older, do you look at the cataract, what can we do there, and what are the limitations of LASIK and what else we can kind of offer. So just some basic anatomy here, right? So when we start talking about things here, the cornea is the clear window in the front of the eye. Right, so if you wear contacts, that's what you put your contact lens on here. And for LASIK surgery, that's what we're reshaping. And, and Dr. Chokes will talk about kind of what, what tools we use to do that here. But we're either, either steepening your cornea or flattening your cornea, adjusting the shape of the eye or rounding it off to, to get, get the proper level of, of correction here. That's where most of the action happens in terms of LASIK surgery with PRK. And we'll talk about those two in just a little bit here. So as far as the terms here, nearsightedness, farsightedness, astigmatism, and presbyopia. Nearsightedness means you can see up close, but you can't see far, right? Uh, so you need glasses for TV and for driving and whatnot, but if you take off your glasses, you can, you can kind of read. 
Hyperopia is a condition where the eye is too short. You may have focusing capacity uh, when you're younger, but uh, over time you lose the ability to see up close and lose distance vision and everything's kind of a war. Really, really dependent process there. Um, and again, just, just some of the schematics here. Myopes are people who are nearsighted, their eyeball's too long. So we have to kind of adjust the shape of the cornea to get the light to focus back onto the back. And with the hyperopia, it's the opposite. The eye's too short. So you're constantly focusing to try to see, but as you get older, it gets harder and harder to do, and everything just kind of blurs out. There isn't a clear zone that for a while. Uh, astigmatism refers to the shape of the cornea. If it's a little bit more, ideally, the cornea should be shaped like a basketball cut in half. It should be equally round in every direction and every axis. People that have astigmatism, their corneas are shaped more like a football cut in half. If you take it long ways and you cut it in half, you can, you've got kind of a broad sloping axis and then you've got a steeper axis. So that creates a blur at all ranges. So the laser can, can reshape the eye to kind of you know, flatten out the steep parts, if you will, to round off the shape of the eye to help correct the steep. And then the term presbyopia refers to loss of near vision. So all of us, after we get kind of past mid-40s into our 50s, whether you have you know, LASIK or not, you lose near vision. And then you maintain excellent distance vision. And then we'll talk about ways we can kind of use LASIK to get one eye distance, one eye near, to try to keep some near vision. But all of us, to, at, at some point, will need reading glasses. Now, if you're nearsighted, you all can always take off your glasses and read. But, but We'll talk about how we kind of deal with this and what are some of the other options out there. I'm going to pass it off to Dr. Choksi and then we'll just kind of go back and forth. Everyone here is, is interested in uh, uh, getting out of their glasses or contacts at some level and uh, essentially seeing better. Just a little personal history. Um, I've had LASIK myself. I had mine about uh, 15 years ago. Um, you know, I was very, very nearsighted. Uh, uh, minus seven uh, for those of you guys who are contacts, uh, you know, it's very nearsighted. And, and I, you know, decided to take a plunge myself, and uh, not only because, you know, it's very contact lens intolerant, but I wanted to see better. Also, I do this myself, you know, uh, for a living, so I wanted to kind of be under the knife or under the laser, so to speak. And, and you know, that, honestly, it's one of the best decisions I've made for myself. And, um, you yeah, know, so anyone that I see as a candidate for LASIK, you know, my passion is to, to help you with your vision. Um, you know, as Dr. Hassan mentioned, maybe LASIK isn't the best option for you, but uh, we do, you know, a wide range of refractive uh, type procedures to get, um, you know, um, out of, if getting out of glasses is your goal, we can see what, what, uh, what you may be a candidate for. Um, some of the initial procedures, kind of the, uh, we'll call them the archaic procedures, no one ever does them um, anymore, is uh, uh, where actually slits were made on the corner. You can see um, on the, um, what's that say? Yeah. yeah, okay. So, you know, the, the pupils here, these yellow kind of schematics are basically cuts on the cornea. This is actually a, a microscopic uh, magnified view. And um, this was done uh, actually initially in Russia uh, where they found pilots that had kind of glass pieces in their eye found out that they lost their nearsightedness. And they, and then basically uh, the, the inventor, or the kind of the pioneer of this, uh, took this to actually formalize it called RK. Um, so this was done probably started at least about 40, 50 years ago. Um, so, but to this day, we see patients that have had this uh, technology done. And in some patients it works, unfortunately, there's a lot of regression and it's not as advanced as our, as our current technology. Uh, the more up-to-date and more kind of, you know, what we do is more laser-based. And as you can imagine, the laser is much more precise, much more accurate. Um, uh, there's something called the eczema laser, which actually reshapes the cornea. Um, and, and it's so precise that it, uh, it really can uh, uh, correct things on a micron type level, uh, which uh, you know, for, for correcting even small amounts of correction, it's very, very precise. And there, there's two main procedures, one called PRK and one called LASIK. Uh, the, the, the reshaping is done in the same way. Um, the main difference is how we get access to the cornea. So PRK is done on the surface, and we'll show a schematic of this, and LASIK is done underneath the corneal flap. Um, because LASIK is done under a corneal flap, uh, the flap peels very quickly, and that's why um, you really have, like I had LASIK myself, but the next day I was seeing well, um, and by within two days I was seeing patients and operating on patients uh, myself. So it's a very quick recovery, uh, so I know many of you probably have questions about you know, recovery time, but I mean, that's why LASIK has become so popular, because it is such a quick recovery time, um, and, and very effective. Now for uh, folks that may not be candidates for a corneal-based procedure, if you're maybe 
too myopic or too far-sighted, or maybe you start developing presbyopia and, and it, you just don't fit in that LASIK category, um, we can do more lens-based surgery where we avoid the cornea and, and actually put lenses in the eye either on top of your natural lens, uh, that's called an ICL, um, or a refractive lens exchange where we actually take out your natural lens and, and put an artificial lens in. Um, for some, for, for when people develop cataracts, that's what we do all the time. We take out their natural cataract and put a lens implant in, but we can actually perform this earlier on when um, maybe cataracts haven't developed, but we can do it just to get, um, uh, correct vision and, and pitch out of glasses. So uh, I always, we always like to show this picture. Um, this is actually um, a, a picture of uh, human hair. So this is how, how fine the, uh, the Exomor laser can correct um, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a piece of tissue basically. So this is the same laser. This is from, from the FDA studies. This picture is probably about 30 years old. Um, but uh, that, that's the, the level of detail that I can correct the cornea, which is what we need when we're correcting um, uh, uh, such a small, uh, precise, uh, so in such a small and precise way. But it's a cool laser. There's no, there's no uh, heat or thermal injury that sometimes you can get with other lasers. And that's why uh, the healing time is so quick. Um, now PRK, uh, the same laser that is used to reshape the cornea, but instead of making it underneath the corneal flap, it's done right on top of the cornea. And, uh, and, and, and because it's done on top of the cornea, the surface cells have to heal over, and that's what takes a little bit longer time to um, actually heal over. So um, it may take about a week for the corneal surface cells to heal over. It doesn't mean you're totally kind of incapacitated, it just means that the vision, your final vision may take a little bit longer to get there. Uh, this was actually FDA approved prior to LASIK, um, so this that probably has about a 30 year track, track history, track track record. Um, just, you know, some, some history about our practice. Dr. Dr. Mayo was actually the first, uh, first surgeon to perform PRK uh, in Florida uh, back in 1989. Um, uh, the PRK was approved in 1991 uh, in Canada, so for a while uh, patients were going to Canada after uh, a procedure done, and in 1995 it got approved. <clears throat> now LASIK, um, which is the one that everyone's heard of uh, for vision correction, a, a, a corneal flap uh, is actually made. So you see, uh, now initially that flap was made um, by something called microkeratome, uh, which is basically the bladed way uh, to make flaps. And, and to this day, there's some practices that still use that. Um, we, we a long time ago have converted to an all laser LASIK, where this is actually made with the laser as well and the correction belt the laser. So, um, we call it an all laser LASIK. Basically, the laser is doing the entire procedure. Uh, obviously, we're still needed to put things in the right place and make sure everything's working. Uh, but um, but the, precise, the precision of the technology uh, for all laser LASIK is, it surpasses kind of the, the older way. But uh, to be frank, I mean, I had, I had LASIK done the old-fashioned way. That's, that was just 15 years ago, and, and I'm seeing great. But, but as with any technological improvements, the complication rates are less, the precision is higher, accuracy is higher, and our overall you know, satisfaction of patients are higher. So, um, you know, what I was mentioning before, how to make the flap. So this over here, this is the, that small handheld device that actually would, would make the flap. So it was literally a motor kind of attached to a blade. It doesn't sound great, but that's actually what made the flap. But now we have a much more kind of advanced system that, uh, uh, that makes the flap itself. Basically what it does, it makes uh, small little cavitation bubbles in the cornea and done, done successively in a, in a pattern, a raster pattern, um, uh, it, it creates a, a plane where we can actually make the flap. And with this laser, the precision is incredible. We can just dial in exactly how thick we want the flap, we, how, how we want to shape the flap, uh, the edges of the flap, so we can, we can almost kind of customize exactly what kind of flap you know you need for, for your eyes. Uh, whereas you know with this, that, that customization is not possible. So it's just kind of one, one flap, one size fits all. So uh, the, the LASIK or, or PRK initially and then LASIK just caught like wildfire. You can imagine we're going from a kind of old fashioned AK, RK, where we're making slits on the cornea, patients didn't do as well to something like PRK and LASIK where pe people notice kind of immediate visual results where they're able to treat a wider range of, uh, of patients. So really in the 90s this took off and, um, and, 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 and tons, of, tons of people were getting lazy, including celebrities, athletes, and, and then really since then, um, uh, millions of people have enjoyed the benefits of, of, of this technology. 
Now, it's not all <laughs> peachy keen and, 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 and great. There's, you know, at the end of the day, this is still a, a procedure. And uh, with any procedure, surgical procedure, uh, even though it's outpatient, even though it only takes about 15, 20 minutes, there are some risks. And uh, obviously, this is a cartoon slide about what, what the risks are. But, but, but you know, just like I went through the risks 15 years ago with LASIK, yeah, each and every one of you, you know, considering the procedure, need to understand what the risk and benefits of the procedure are. And um, rare things are rare. So when you think about blindness or scar tissue or infection or, or things like that, I mean, I tell my patients, you have, you have more of a chance of getting hit by a car on the way out, just random things. Um, you know, both, you know, dry eyes can, can happen. Um, there's always a chance that you may need to touch up. Um, and when we do a very, very uh, comprehensive exam, um, um, sometimes up to two, two and a half hours, just to make sure you are a candidate. And, and by doing that, we can really tell you, yes, you, know, you are a candidate, yes, or no, you're not, or maybe you're a candidate for something else. And what we found um, is that when there's a problem with refractive surgery, the problem was not the procedure, the problem was that they weren't good candidates to begin with. And, and to do that kind of thorough exam is really critical to ensure that you get the optimal result. Um, so, so some things that you know, I mentioned, you know, dry eyes are, are, are a very common thing uh, after LASIK, uh, but it usually it's very short-lived. We do some dry testing beforehand uh, to make sure that there's no excessive dry eyes and that, 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 it, that may make someone not a candidate for uh, uh, LASIK um, or, or PRK. Uh, there's always a chance that you may need a touch-up um, afterwards, um, especially for higher levels of prescription. Um, but uh, you know we 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 run our numbers and, and really our what we call our enhancement or our touch up rate is is kind of in the one percent range so for for all comers so it's, it's a very very likely on the first go around you'll we'll have the full correction done. Infection is a very rare thing at this point. Um, uh, we we make sure that eyes are healthy to begin with. We have you know very good antibiotics we use and really using the all laser technique that the risk of infection is is. is uh, is, is almost a non-event. So um, for, for folks that have dry eyes to begin with, um, oftentimes we, we like to pre-treat you, you know, for dry eyes. Um, and, and, and most people uh, that either don't have dry eyes or pre-treat for dry eyes, maybe it'll last maybe one to three months, you know, afterwards. And, and usually just need some eye drops. Um, um, so it's music temper. Yeah, exactly. And, and then usually it returns back to your baseline. Now, you know, if it lasts longer, um, there's a wealth of other treatments that we could use, and actually uh, another part of Florida Eye Specialists is we have a dry eye center, so we have, we have a lot of different options to kind of treat that. So. so, you know, having successful ones, and, and LASIK is kind of our umbrella term for, you know, all, all types of refractive surgery, but uh, you, you, we want to be safe, we want to provide a quality uh, um, a procedure with the best technology, um, and, and really identifying who's good candidates and who's not good candidates, and really having that open discussion uh, with, with anyone that's, that's uh, you know, in front of us. And, and, and I, I know uh, Dr. Stein and myself, I mean, we're, we're not afraid to say no to surgery. You know, we, you know, we, we enjoy surgery, we, we enjoy fixing people's vision, but at the end of the day, uh, you know, we treat you like, like family. Like I, I personally have done this on my sister, my, 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 my brother-in-law, my best friend, you know, I've done LASIK, and, and I would, you know, we would treat you the same way that, hey, look, if a family member is sitting in front of us, you know, needing more practice procedures, this is how, you know, you want to get treated. So, um, uh, like I said, I think the, 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 during the exam to determine if you're a candidate for LASIK, some of you guys have probably had a thorough eye exam, but this is like a thorough eye exam on steroids. I mean, it's a very, we, you know, we, we, uh, we dilate your eyes, we'll check a prescription before and after. Um, if, um, if you have presbyopia, we do a, a trial of vision. Maybe you, do, you prefer monovision, one eye for distance, one eye for up close. We can test that at the same time of the procedure, I'm sorry, of, of, the, uh, of the exam. Uh, we take uh, tons of scans of your eye, determine curvature of your eye, and we test it with successive machines to ensure that um, you know, everything is consistent. And, and honestly, uh, the biggest part of this is counseling. You can sit one-on-one -on -one with, with, with one of our counselors. Uh, you've met some of our staff already. Um, and and it's, uh, this is the biggest part of the exam, to see if you are a candidate, what are, what are your questions, make sure they're answered, and, and, and how you, you know, if you're interested in proceeding, what the next steps are. So uh, we check to see where your glasses are at, see if you're far-sighted, near-sighted, you know, presbyopia, how much astigmatism. We do uh, scans of your, uh, of your cornea, we dilate your eyes, um, check the pupils, 
um, and also check the thickness of your corneas, all in an attempt to see kind of if you're a good candidate. Um, um, the day of the surgery, um, uh, we don't have this person on, on staff, so we don't have to worry about that. <laughs> but uh, um, we, we, we have a very relaxed environment, uh, you know, uh, nice kind of spa music setting, and the, the, the ambiance is there. Um, but most importantly, <laughs> we give you uh, a mild sedative on <laughs> the day of surgery it's a, uh, to help kind of relax you. And the first time I ever took Valium was when I had the surgery as a, as a thing that kind of uh, um, made it easy to kind of get through the whole process. Uh, but it is done in the office, um, LASIK, um, so there's no, um, there's no IVs, there's no, like obviously there's no general anesthesia, it's, it's done, you know, all in the office. Um, we, we, prep, we prep you, we check you, um, and then um, and then we take it to laser suite, it takes about, uh, about 15, 20 minutes. And then usually afterwards, you, you, you know, all the high of the surgery is gone, and then you can kind of unload, uh, unload and, and, and just kind of go to sleep. And, and most of my patients uh, end up um, kind of taking a nap and just kind of resting the rest of that day. The laser is so precise, and the way that it is so precise, it has a, um, uh, a we'll call it a tracker. Um, so, so the laser, every time it fires a spot, it actually follows your eyes twice, you know. So, I mean, you know, we're talking kind of, you know, you know, thousands of times within like a second, basically. So they're, they're yeah. awake. Yeah, so, so you're awake and you just basically have to look at a light, you know. Is there something holding the head still? <laughs> I know. Yeah, you know, we, we uh, it, it sometimes certain we tape the head, but not this. We, you know, patients are, uh, you know, if you really want it, we can put it, but then, you know, most people don't, uh, most people don't need it at all. So, uh, we do help keep the eye open so you don't have to worry about it, you know, closing or blinking. And then the tracker takes over, and, and, and really the, the laser follows you much quicker than you could even kind of move your eyes. And say hypothetically you move your eyes too much, the laser actually stops, we reset you, and then the laser will take over from where it was before. So a lot of fail-proof kind of mechanisms are in place. For our LASIK patients, overnight it's like magic. They wake up the next morning, the eyes are feeling much better, and they kind of wake up and they can kind of see. So you really get a wow factor with LASIK. They come in the next day. I mean. It's, it's, it's a life-altering event in that, in that regard, right? So we do see you, everybody the next day uh, just to recheck everything to make sure there's no inflammation or anything like that. Kind of go over the eye drop schedule, make sure that the margins of the flop are everything's perfect. Uh, for our PRK patients, we end up doing PRK roughly about 10, 20% of the time for you know, whether the cornea is too thin or other concerns. Um, the eye is kind of scratchy, gritty, blurry that first three to five days, so we just. Uh, you know, we give them extra drops, we put a special contact lens on there to help with healing and with comfort. But we do see everybody back um, back the next day. Uh, and then we do see people the, the following week. So there's not a lot of follow-up after about a week. Um, we've done some <coughs> prescription drops with LASIK. You can really kind of get back to most activities without worry. And then we really space out the visits. You do like a one month, a three month, and then a six month post -op. As Dr. Chokes, he was saying, we do a, a touch-up or an enhancement roughly about 1% of the time or so. Depending on how individuals heal, uh, a very small subset, a little bit of the nearsightedness creeps back in as they heal. So within that first year or so, we're even longer, we're able to safely lift up the flap and do a little extra laser if we needed to. And we don't charge for that. That's kind of built into the equation because we never know, honestly, who that 1% is. Usually, as Dr. Chokesy mentioned, it's people who have a higher correction, like if you're really nearsighted are really far-sighted, you're, you're more likely to have variability as far as you heal. Um, but, but even with those little enhancements, people do extremely, extremely well. Now, as, as far as where to go from here, obviously you're here because you have an interest, right? Um, and, and you're doing the right thing by coming and getting all the information you want, you want to kind of get. Uh, as, as far as the next step, if, if you're interested, what we do is we, we can arrange a free consultation, right? And, and that's where you kind of get your most of our eye exam you're going to get, we, we, we check everything. Based on your measurements and your maps and everything, we really come up with the best game plan, right? And sometimes it's no game plan, and that's okay with us, right? So our job is to make sure we do the best thing for you, right? That's kind of how we approach things. And that's very important to understand that. I mean, we both have, all of us have that philosophy. We are, we're not interested in doing more cases. We really want to do the right case for the right patient. Um, and then we get to any questions you might have, because you want to go into it with an informed decision, right? There is zero pressure. There's no obligation, right, to go forward at all. Um, we have kept our, our LASIK office, as, as Dr. Chooks was saying, a spa-like environment, right? We don't want any stress. We don't want any pressure. Nobody's there to sell you anything. It's really there to gain, gain information, and then you figure out what you're comfortable with and what's the best thing for you. 
And our job is to kind of guide you through that. Now, um, we're also kind of up front with what we offer and how we offer it here, uh, as far as kind of what our global fee is. And, and that includes you know, the thorough preoperative assessment. Um, we have invested in our technology. We have the most up-to-date lasers we, uh, in the market as far as what we've done with the XML laser. Um, as far as post-operative care, you are definitely seeing a surgeon, right? So that, that's important. We don't delegate our care to other providers. So we're making sure that, that your eyes are being examined by, by our, our team of LASIK surgeons. Um, we cover any enhancements. There's always somebody available to you, right? So it's always going to be one of the surgeons. Um, and, you know, um, as far as pricing goes, you know, it's important to understand there's going to be variable pricing, right? That's part of the deal here. Um, it's just important that, you know, when you're shopping around and you're looking, aside from the experience aspect of it is, you know, you want to make sure you're kind of comparing apples to apples, right? So some of the advertisements you'll hear, you know, on the radio or whatnot are, are aims to kind of get you in the door. And, and that pricing may be extremely low, but, it, you know, 99% of the patients aren't, aren't candidates for that pricing based on their correction. So it's really done, you know, whether it's your two, three hundred dollar kind of lazy thing, that's just done to kind of get you in the door. And we're not really interested in all that kind of stuff. So, you know, this is what we do, whether it's PRK, whether it's LASIK, our, our job is to work with you to kind of fix your eyes, right? And everything's covered, there's no surprise charges or fees. And we just don't do all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, uh, like I said, it's just important to do your homework, right? And that's kind of what you're doing tonight, uh, is you want to you invest in the best experience and the best technology and kind of figure out what, where you're most comfortable as far as uh, who you want to provide care for you. Obviously, as far as the benefits, it is, is the goal is to be more free of glasses and contactless, right? Um, so you can enjoy the activities you want to do. It really comes down to quality of life, right? Uh, and that's what we're all talking about here, is independence from glasses, um, or when doing the activities you enjoy doing without, without having to wear glasses or contactless. Uh, we obviously couldn't do that without our top rated staff. I mean, we have excellent people that have been there for years. And they're extremely knowledgeable and extremely passionate about LASIK surgery. A lot of times I'll walk into the room and patients are already signed up for surgery and I'm like, we haven't even met me yet. Because um, they, they just have that much confidence in the exam and in the staff and the counseling that they realize that you know, they're comfortable with, with our office and, and whatnot. So uh, our staff does a great job. They're out here tonight. So if you have any questions for them, by all means, um, you know, they're, they're very, very approachable. And then, as I mentioned earlier, we're certainly part of a larger team. Uh, but this is kind of the, su the sub-team as far as, as LASIK surgeons go. Um, made a custom vision. The office is in Mandarin, San Jose. And, and that's where the lasers are housed. That's where we do all our pre-op evaluation and post-op evaluation. That's pretty much it for tonight. Um, thank you for coming out uh, on a dark, rainy night. Uh, we appreciate it. And then we're around if you guys have any questions.